Sex crazed zombie bugs with disintegrating butts. This sounds like a desperate pitch from a Hollywood writer who's had every other idea rejected and is now just putting bad words next to each other. And to be fair, we would watch it. But in fact, it's the fate awaiting thousands of cicadas as they emerge from their 17 year long underground development period. Here's what you need to know. Thousands of Brood X periodic cicadas could be playing host to a fungus that turns them into spore-shedding fungal gardens and transforms their behavior, according to the Washington Post. The cicadas will emerge in the US this month, having begun their lives as eggs laid by adults high in trees before hatching, falling, and burrowing into the ground below for up to 17 years, according to a 1995 annual review of entomology study cited by Live Science. However, some of the cicadas will have been infected by a fungus known as Massospora cicadina found in the soil beneath the trees, according to a study by researchers from West Virginia University published in the PLOS Pathogens Journal in 2020. When these infected cicadas emerge from the ground, the fungus is still contained within their bodies, but gradually the back halves of their bodies are eaten away by the fungus, leaving an abdomen-shaped clump of fungus exposed. As the fungus spores are released from the infected cicadas, they infect others, but infected males were also found to flick their wings in the same manner as females to encourage other males to mate with them and thus transmit the fungus sexually. Even after their abdomens have ruptured, cicadas attempt to function normally, wandering over trees, flying, and attempting to mate. The cicadas' attempts to continue mating as if half of their bodies hadn't just fallen off may be caused by chemicals in the fungus similar to those found in hallucinogenic mushrooms, according to a study published in the journal Fungal Ecology. Cathinone and psilocybin are both psychoactive compounds that may interact with the cicadas' own hormones to create the strange, sexualized behavior they exhibit when infected. Everybody's having a good time while they're infected, lead author of the study Matt Casson told NPR, adding, I don't imagine there's much pain, maybe a desire to listen to the Grateful Dead or something like that, but no pain. Of course, these bugs are not even close to the most disgusting thing you can find on this channel. A girl in Delaware was bitten on the face by a kissing bug, resulting in the state's first confirmed identification. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, triatamines, often called kissing bugs, are insects that suck blood and bite the faces of people while they're asleep. Some of these kissing bugs carry a parasite known as Trypanosoma cruzi. This is a parasite that could potentially cause Chagas disease. However, not all triatamine bugs carry the parasite. If the parasite is present, it will be in the insect's feces. The parasite is able to enter the skin of a person that is bitten if the insect's feces has accidentally been rubbed into the person's bite wound or into a mucous membrane such as the eyes or the mouth. Initial symptoms of Chagas disease include fever, body aches, headaches, and rashes. According to the CDC, the disease may result in cardiac complications or intestinal complications for some. Antitrypanosomal medication can be used to treat Chagas disease. According to the CDC, the girl was bitten by the bug as she watched TV, but she did not become sick. In order to prevent the spread of the disease, the CDC recommends sealing gaps and cracks around windows and walls, as well as repairing any holes and tears on screen doors. Everything is on the up and up in the US, you can't deny that. The numbers coming out of the bedbug sector are especially strong and should continue to climb. Baltimore has ranked number one on Oregon's annual Top 50 Bedbug Cities list for a second straight year. Baltimore was followed by Washington, Chicago, Los Angeles, and Columbus. Bedbug numbers were reduced after World War II, but have since made a comeback due to increased traveling, regulatory restrictions on insecticides such as DDT, and tolerance to organic pesticides. One research firm found that the bedbug control industry was worth around $611.2 million US dollars in 2016, with some analysts estimating industry revenue could hit $1 billion in five years. According to one report, hotels spend on average $6,383 per bedbug incident, which includes the replacement cost for soft goods, treatment, and lost business. Bugs, while icky, are critical to nature and new research indicates they might be in decline. The research looked at the biomass of flying insects inside 63 German nature reserves. It found that between 1989 and 2016, the reserve's total flying insect population had declined by an average of 76%. The cause of the massive drop is unclear, but the fact the insects vanished at such a high rate has scientists concerned. 
The researchers say their findings could be representative of other areas around the world. Nature needs bugs, and we need nature. And if there's no nature, well, the planet becomes Mars 2.0. A poor sheep and its New Jersey owner somehow wound up riddled with thousands of Asian ticks last year, and nobody knows why or how. An infestation of ticks on a sheep were reported to New Jersey health officials in the summer of 2017 after the animal's owner found them during a shearing session. According to NPR, officials found more than 1,000 ticks on her clothing. When officials visited the site, they found themselves covered in ticks. They removed 1,000 from the animal's paddock and found hundreds more on the sheep. Further analysis found them to be Asian ticks, infectious parasites from East Asia. Officials are unsure how they wound up in New Jersey. A study on the events notes the sheep have no travel history. The grass was subsequently cut in the paddock and both the sheep and property were treated with chemicals. A November inspection found both to be tick-free. But that doesn't mean they died, Tomo sapiens. They could have flocked onto other animals, ramming deeper into the U.S. Sadly, though, the 12-year-old Icelandic sheep reportedly passed away. Ticks are typically out from spring through summer and early fall, but 2017 is particularly bad, and here's why. The northeastern U.S. had a warmer winter, which means more ticks survived and made a whole bunch of baby bloodsuckers. There's also been an increase in the number of deer and other woodland creatures, which ticks typically rely on as food sources. Oh, and don't forget the exploding mice population across the northeastern United States. More rodents to act as hosts. Fun! So here are the problems you might encounter and some ways to combat them. People living in areas affected by Lyme disease should check their bodies daily for ticks. And if you do find one, don't panic. Using tweezers, carefully remove the tick by pulling its mouth out of the skin. Do not squeeze the tick's body, as this can cause the contents of its stomach to burst onto the skin. Also, don't use petroleum jelly or smoke to remove it. Check with the Centers for Disease Control if Lyme disease is a problem in your area. Save the tick for lab testing. Monitor your health, and if you develop symptoms of Lyme disease, consult a doctor. The Powassan virus is a potentially life-threatening virus transmitted by ticks, including the deer tick. The virus can infect everyone, including children, teenagers, middle-aged people, and the elderly. Although most people will not develop symptoms, the virus kills about 15% of those who do. Meanwhile, some 50% of survivors will suffer long-term neurological damage. Others will experience symptoms similar to those of the flu, including fevers and headaches. Rocky Mountain spotted fever is a tick-borne illness caused by a bacterium known as Rickettsia rickettsii. Doctors think that Oklahoma woman Jo Rogers may have been bitten by a carrier tick as she visited Grand Lake in the northeast of the state during a vacation in July. Four days later, Rogers thought she had caught a severe flu and was taken to hospital where she was tested for life-threatening diseases such as West Nile virus and meningitis. When all the tests came back negative, Rogers' doctors decided to amputate all four of her limbs to stop the infection from spreading to her vital organs. The symptoms of Rocky Mountain spotted fever include a fever, rash, nausea and muscle pain. It can be treated with antibiotics within five days of an infection. If you notice someone in your family or yourself displaying flu-like symptoms, do remember that it isn't flu season. It's probably a tick. So, um, go see a doctor. What sounds like the absolute worst idea you could ever come up with? Getting a large face tattoo the day before the interview for your dream job? Replying to all of your spam emails with the phrase, Yes, please, that sounds great. How about deliberately releasing a plague of mosquitoes down in Florida? We don't know about the first two, but the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency has given the go-ahead for the mosquitoes. Here's what they're thinking. Biotech company Oxitec will this week begin controversially releasing half a billion gene-hacked mosquitoes along the Florida Keys in an experiment designed to kill off the island's pest population according to Futurism. The experiment will target the mosquito species Aedes aegypti, which makes up between 2% and 4% of the mosquito population in the area, but is associated with almost all cases of mosquito-borne illnesses such as dengue and Zika. 
According to a statement released on the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency's website, scientists have inserted a gene called OX5034 exclusively into male mosquitoes, which don't bite humans. They say the males will breed with wild females, which do. The OX5034 gene kills off female Aedes aegypti mosquitoes before they enter adulthood and therefore steadily reduces the overall population. The move comes as mosquitoes native to Florida are increasingly resistant to existing insecticide controls, according to Undark. However, the experiment has caused controversy across the Florida Keys area, with Futurism reporting many residents concerned with a lack of transparency. Potential issues with the experiment are numerous. In a previous trial in Brazil, Oxitec acknowledged that some second-generation female mosquitoes with a similar gene, OX513A, had survived into adulthood, leading to suggestions that a new genetic hybrid could survive in the wild. Futurism also points out that there were no caged trials before the actual release of the mosquitoes, leading to accusations from environmental group Friends of the Earth that not enough evidence is in place before the start of the Florida trial. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.